All right, Hornet. I know there's this old joke about you with Big Wasp Yo, but most people here probably don't even really know anything about that to begin with. So, well, okay, for those of you who don't know, let me go ahead and indulge you a little bit. Hello, my name is Big Waspio. Please do not be polite or friendly to call me a bumblebee adult it. There are two powerful sisters. The pressure is really big, but I'm pretty windy too. What? However, that's not what I've really come to know her for nowadays. Let's just say that for some reason, Crosswave decided that Hornet should get the quick takeoff ability, but also have that ability with a ridiculously high chance of actually happening. I'm honestly amazed with the amount of flame spam the game actually allowed with her. Da immediately. What is that? Prince Legend's locked in. Nimi died immediately. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, and almost after breaking my PlayStation, we're on to a new review, and this time with the last sister of the Yorktown class, USS Hornet. Now, Hornet, much like her sisters, has been around since the beginning of the game, and as such, there have been many carriers that have been released since then. Will Hornet be able to stand out among the crowd, or will her seniority once again come back to hurt her? For the sake of this video, I'll be comparing against her sisters again but I'll also make some comparisons against carriers of her particular rarity as well. So without further ado, let's see how she fares. Hornet's survival stats start with her health being a little bit above 5,000. Between her sisters, this puts her in second place among them, beating her sister Yorktown, but barely doing so. Unfortunately, this health pool puts her a bit below the average health pool of all the elite carriers in the game currently. This just means that she'll hit me a bit more frail when it comes to attacks compared to her counterparts. With medium armor, she'll do okay against a good number of attacks, but be extremely careful when fighting battleships with AP rounds, or you'll find yourself down a backliner faster than you may like. Now, Hornet's Evasion follows a similar outcome with her tying Yorktown and barely losing to Enterprise. When compared against all other elite carriers, though, Hornet's above average evasion will allow her to make up for that lower health pool by just a bit. But it should be mentioned that it's best not to rely on this, as backliners normally have low evasion in the beginning. Lastly, her anti-air stat has her losing to both of her sisters, but she does beat a good majority of the elite carrier counterparts of hers. Now, while she doesn't have an AA gun specifically, her AA stat will just simply allow her to tank air-based attacks better. Now, if you're looking for someone to make up for not having that AA gun, well, the <laughs> okay, points for timing on this one compared to the last one, but while you're not wrong, you're not right either. I was making a point about Isuzu having two AA guns instead of just one, but again, you're not wrong and you're not right. Points for trying though. Anyway, it's not a great saw overall for Hornet but let's see how things go on terms of the offensive side. In that regard, Hornet's aviation puts her in second place among her sisters, and up at the top among her elite carrier counterparts. This gives her a nice advantage in her plane damage output. While she ties your town for a reload, her reload still is better than almost all the elite counterparts. What this means is that the timers for her particular planes will be better than the other elite carriers. Granted, I will say it's not a lot, but it will still increase her overall DPS by just a tad bit. So, given her high aviation and reload as an elite, does this mean that her gear manages to keep that pace and outpace every other elite carrier in the game? Well, before I get into that, I want to remind everyone here that it's important to pay attention to each carrier you use. Some of them will have a different loadout to Hornet, while others may actually sacrifice a plane slot for an anti-air gun or or they may actually be able to equip guns themselves. Regardless, it's important you pay attention to these differences in the loanout, as that is another aspect to the carriers that makes them stand out from each other. In Hornet's case, she runs one of each particular plane type, and at max limit break, she runs a 3-3-2 setup, meaning three fighters, three dive bombers, and two torpedo bombers. Her sisters share this exact same loadout with her, so there's no deviating from that. In terms of efficiency as well, her sisters share the same efficiencies across the board at 125%. Now, 
Now, how does that stack up against her counterparts? Well, it really depends on what plane we're comparing. Her fighter game will be about average, but her dive and torpedo bomber games will be a bit lacking in the efficiency department. This might allow her counterparts to catch up to her against her higher aviation and reload. Overall, Hornet's got a glass cannon feel to her. Her slightly lower health pull can be a concern, but good defensive vanguard ships as well as proper timings with airstrikes and maybe healers can help mitigate that particular side of her. Her offense doesn't seem too bad, but is a little bit hurt by low efficiencies compared to all her other counterparts. Anyway, at level 120, we do see some considerable jumps to her health and a balanced jump in her stats everywhere else. This really doesn't change anything statline-wise, but more health is definitely good for her considering it is her weakest area. Even at level 125, we still see a decent jump in terms of health as well. Even then, it still pales in comparison to many of the carrier counterparts she has. However, Hornet might still have some strong power to her, but this is going to depend on the skills that she does have. Now, Hornet's first skill is Doolittle Airstrike, which has up to a 60% chance to proc when launching an airstrike. If this particular skill procs, then Hornet will release a B-25 airstrike. Alongside her airstrike, this plane can be seen more as a shadow that appears along the water. Upon reaching the right side of the screen, a large number of bombs appear alongside the usual bombs dropped by her airstrike alone. The damage actually seems decent, so hey, a little extra damage is never a bad thing whatsoever. The plane looks like it cannot be shot down, so it seems like a guaranteed source of damage. However, do keep in mind that this airstrike is a bit of RNG, so it's possible that one may not get this bonus airstrike whatsoever. Hornet's second skill is Assault Carrier, which has up to a 25% chance to proc when launching an airstrike. When the skill does proc, though, her damage output is doubled for 10 seconds. Now, double damage is a huge bonus, and it does follow on her sister Enterprise's footsteps here. However, the RNG of the skill is significantly lower than that of Lucky E. So while it's not as likely to proc, and it doesn't come with that particular invulnerability that Enterprise gets, it's still a nice thing that does happen when it procs for you. I want to believe that the way this skill is worded allows for her first skill's bonus airstrike to also benefit from this particular skill as well. If it does, then hey, that bonus airstrike will also do some considerable damage as well. Overall, much like her super rare sister, Enterprise, Hornet follows in her footsteps in focusing on damage as much as she can. Much like her sister, she's also very RNG based, and with how low some of her chances are, she may not get her skills to proc during the fight at all. She'll do okay damage-wise regardless, but it'll almost be like she never had any skills to begin with. Now, due to the RNG nature of her, a good number of carriers overall do perform better, so the question of whether or not to use her, well, it exists. Now, as I will always say, waifu over meta is the biggest reason people may use her, and that's not a problem at all. Hornet definitely has some cute aspects to her, and I do like her Gala skin. Aside from this though, maybe you're a newer player, and she is one of the first carriers you have. If that's the case, then go with it. She'll take care of you for a while until you get a comfortable size roster to work with and feel like trying out other ship girls. Regardless of the reason, while she may not be the best carrier, even with seniority, she still has some power to her even then. Now, if you're using her, is she a mob or boss backliner? Well, the RNG nature of her skills can hurt in a boss fight, especially when you need that strong damage output to do extremely well. The low chances on her skills may hurt more than help in that particular case. That said, while this same situation applies to the mob fleet, it can be a bit more forgiving there. So the mob fleet feels like a good fit for her now in the end. Of course, if you're newer, and she's one of your main ship girls that you have to work with, then by all means, use her where you see fit. Anyway, while she may not be the strongest carrier out there, her can-do attitude and energy definitely does not let that stop her. And that's all for Hornet. Hope you enjoyed this video and that will help you in your future endeavors. Up next, you know, let's do a PR ship for a random pick. And what better one to start with than my first PR ship ever, Monarch. After that, well, we'll have the start of the Royal Maid SR Trio, Belfast. So look forward to their videos when they come out. Whether you're a regular viewer or a patron supporting the channel on Patreon, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again real soon. 
Hello, my name is Big Waspio. Please do not be polite, <laughs> friendly to call me Bumblebee adult. <laughs> it's what? There are two powerful sisters. <laughs> what happened to the third one? <laughs> the pressure is relieving. What are you, a submarine? Okay. <laughs> the pressure is relieving. Oh, God. But, but, <laughs> what did you do? 